a little look at the old box before we go ahead and replace her. That's what we're working with right now. Two PSR recones on the Type X's, Alpines, Massive 2000. You guys remember the install. If you don't remember, I'll go ahead and include it in the description. Two C&D UPS 270Rs, comparable to the Optimas. Pretty good, he's got an Optima yellow top at the front. Standard fusing, got 200 amp in there right now. First step in the whole process, we're on our way to Home Depot. We got Riley friggin' taking a piss over there. What in the hell? Design. For this enclosure, we'll highlight the most basic software out there right now, the RE Box Calculator. If you use it creatively, you can actually come up with some pretty cool stuff. All you gotta do is go to Google, search it up, and it'll be the first link to click. First, you wanna know the maximum dimensions of the area you plan on installing the enclosure in. Once you have the ideal measurements, plug them into the respective category in the program. In our case, we have a width of 40 inches in the back. So to be safe, we'll click in 38 inches cut. And as far as the height goes, you can choose anything you want to bring the volume to where you need it. But in our case, I'm going to put it at 17 inches just so we can stay below the window line. Messing with the depth can also give you more control on the tuning and the volume of the box without messing with the height or the width. With this box, we're using two layers of MDF, which comes out to be 1.5 inches thick. Now it's time to determine the final size of your port without exceeding the suggested specs of your woofer. With a target tuning of 32 hertz, go ahead and play around with the port measurements until you reach that mark. Also compensating for the fact that when you put your woofers in, they are going to take up space, so go for a target tuning of 31 or 30 hertz, that way when the area is displaced, it will make up for the difference. Now let's go to the change that we're going to apply to this box in order to make it more efficient. Now you might not notice it, but there's actually a big problem being posed by this rear port wall. To put it simply, any amount of pressure being generated from subs mounted front to back one would be unavoidably obstructed by this port wall. All we're going to have to do is flip it and put it right next to the other one with still 3.5 inches of distance between them. And one more improvement we're going to make is changing the mounting position of these subwoofers, both for client aesthetic and even back pressure from one subwoofer to the other. Now that we've addressed these issues, the subwoofer design is now complete and you're ready to start making all your cuts, which conveniently this software plans it all out for you cut by cut. Good luck guys! Now I can already see all the comments from people saying that you need a table saw in order to do all this stuff, but for this video I'm actually going to prove to you that besides cutting the 45s, you can actually make all these cuts with a simple skill saw. No wonder why this stuff's illegal in some countries. 